Number 15 then, the last question, the 2022 National 5 Paper 1. It's a five mark question, it's in two parts, but really the question just says, here you've got two shapes, a triangle and a rectangle. If they have to have the same area, what's the value of x? So obviously you're going to find an expression for the area of the triangle, an expression for the area of the rectangle, equate those two expressions, which will give you an equation, and solve it. But it breaks it up. First part for one mark, just what's the area of the triangle? Well, the area of a triangle, we'll just put a VT for the triangle, is a half base times height. So it's a half of, the base is three, and just put down the expression for the height, just do with the letters or with the expressions what you would do with the numbers. Now, there's not a lot you can do with that, but you can change that half times a three into a three upon two. So write it that way, three upon two X plus 12. That gets the mark for that part. And so part B for the remaining four marks, given that the area of the triangle is equal to the area of the rectangle, find algebraically, so don't just try numbers for x until you find one that works, find algebraically the value of x. Well, you've got an expression for the area of the triangle, so do the same for the rectangle. The area of the rectangle will be the length times the breadth. You can put a formula down if you like, length times breadth, base times height. Or just go straight in with the numbers. Six times the dimensions, rather, eight minus x. Now, that doesn't get a mark yet. You get the mark once you've equated them. So it said you want the area of the triangle to be the same as the area of the rectangle. That means you want this. 3 upon 2x plus 12 to be the same as that, 6 times 8 minus x. Now you get the first of the marks. Now let's just solve this equation. You can see it's going to be a simple equation. There'll be no quadratics involved here. Well, the first step would be get rid of multiply out the brackets. Well, get rid of the fractions first. Rather than carrying on the fractions through it, just multiply both sides by 2. So that means this side would become 3, and this side would become 12. And you only multiply once, you don't multiply that by 2 and that by 2. Then you multiplied by 4 and there's no need to multiply by 4. So get rid of the fractions. In fact, that's the first mark. Get rid of the fractions. You could also just multiply out keeping the fractions there, in which case that would be worth a mark. But now, tidy that up. So you've got a 3x plus a 36. 96 minus a 12x. That doesn't get a mark yet. Now, bring them across. Put the x's on this side. Take away 12 will become plus 12, which will make that a 15x. That'll be minus 36, which knocks that down to 60. That gets a mark. Now, finally, divide it out. It'll be 60 divided by 15, which means that x is equal to 4. Now, you could have kept going with a fraction there, I suppose, but usually what you do is you get rid of fractions straight away. The first thing you do with equations is get rid of fractions. But you could have written 3 upon 2x plus, no, 3 upon 2 times the 12. Well, dividing by the 2 is 6, and 3 sixes are 18. Then multiplying this out, that'll be 48 minus 6x, in which case that would have been the first mark. Then bringing it across, but now you've got 3 upon 2x plus 6x. Unless you want to change to decimals, will be the 48, take away the 18, well that's easy, that's the 30. So that would become 12, 15 upon 2x equals the 30. So x would be 2 fifteenths of 30. So x would be 15 goes in twice times 2 is 4. But notice what happens here is, you, if you keep the fractions, you're going to end up with fractions all the way through, and there'll be fractions involved in all of the multiplications and additions and so on. That's why normally you get rid of fractions straight away, so you've just got nice little whole numbers to work with.